Hi, I'm Helen, the co-founder of Amazing If, and I wanted to talk about a matrix that came up in a conversation that I was having with a journalist last week about when is the right time to leave your job. And in the conversation, I talked about the importance of thinking about what you love and what you're learning and using those things to determine when you should leave. And I turned it into a matrix because I love a matrix. Uh, and I thought I would talk it through in case this is a decision you might be thinking about or something you might be wanting to help someone with as well. So let's get started on what the matrix looks like and then we'll fill in the different boxes. And at the end, I've got lots of different resources depending on where you might be at the moment. So the first thing that we need to do is to understand the matrix. It's a two by two matrix and the dimensions are, do you love it or do you not love it? And are you learning or are you not learning? And depending where you sit on the matrix depends on the action that you should take. So the first one that we're going to look at is when you are learning a lot in the role that you're in or the organization you're in, but you don't really love it. For whatever reason, it is not really clicking. I have been there in this situation uh, and it can feel like a really big career conflict because you're just not sure what you do you know you know you're growing but you're not sure you're growing in the right place and um, best thing to do here so before you look to leave the best thing to do here is to think about the people that you are working with and also the purpose of your of the work that you're doing if you can find the why behind the work the thing that is meaningful and motivating to you often you can connect a bit more with that love it bit but also people are a really big part of your engagement in your work so if you can find some some internal communities, some people that you connect with, some like-minded learners, for example, so those people that like learning the same thing as you, you might reconnect with a bit more of that passion and that energy and that love for what you're doing as well. So that's the first part. The second bit of the matrix is when you really love where you're working, you have a real connection with the company and maybe the team or the department that you're in, but you feel like maybe you're stagnating a bit. You're not really learning as much as you'd like to really important thing for you here is to create challenge rather than wait for it because it's probably not going to get any better and you might stagnate in that situation and one of the ways that you can do that proactively is thinking about how you can stretch your strengths so start with you know what is it that you want to be known for what is that strength you really want to stand out and try to proactively find ways that you can use it more that might be through job crafting maybe you could ask your manager to delegate some of their responsibilities to you Maybe there's some projects you could, could proactively get involved in. Uh, look at your colleagues, look at your peers, see how you could support them with your strengths. Even look outside of the role that you're in now, the team that you're in, and more within the organization more broadly, and think about how you could stretch your strengths in different ways there. All of those different ways you could use your strengths will create a bit more challenge, increase your learning, and also help you to grow your brand at the same time. The third area here, this is not the great spot. This is where you're not learning and you don't love it. Really, this is about looking to leave, but look to leave before you leap <laughs> because you don't want to go from one situation that isn't working for you in your career into another one because you're feeling like you just want to go really, really quickly. I would recommend here doing a bit of career scanning. So look at different job descriptions, even jobs that might not feel like ones that you definitely want to apply for. But think about what skills do they need? What are you passionate about in them? Look back at your career as well. Think about the highest highs and the lower lows. What was it in those moments that really helped you to connect to your career, help you feel like you were increasing your impact? You basically want to do a little bit of reflection looking back and a little bit of projection looking forward and to connect the dots. What is it about your work that makes you feel like you are learning a lot? What is it about jobs that you really, really love? Put those insights together to create yourself a career criteria. And then when you are looking to leave, look at different opportunities, different organizations that connect with that career criteria. It is much more likely to be a good move for you to make if you've got those dots in place. And then last but not least, this is the, the really nice squiggly career sweet spot, basically, where you are loving what you're doing and you are learning a lot. Brilliant, but don't 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 stay there. Um, think about how you can squiggle and stay. What we don't want to do here, the risk is that we get into that default trap of thinking that 
progression is only promotion and actually think about how you can squiggle and say this is an organization and opportunity that is amazing for your development you are going to grow a lot here and so really take advantage of the learning that you can get squiggle and stay means developing in different directions think about horizontal moves think about different moves that might feel ambitious for you so that's interesting but maybe a bit out of reach think about you can learn more about different departments that you might not work with closely think about basically how you can be at your best in this organization because it is going to be a really meaningful part of your squiggly career so in summary, uh, these are these four different areas and these are four different resources. So if you are in a position where you are looking to squiggle and stay, we have a brilliant podcast and pod sheet for you all about how you can explore your progression possibilities. So it will help you think about how you can develop in different directions. If you want to stretch your strengths, so maybe you're loving where you are, you maybe want to learn a bit more, then watch our Squiggly Career at Summer School, which is all around strengths. If you're thinking, I'd like to get a bit more of that, those people connections, a bit more of that purpose, very recently did a podcast on building your career community. You can listen to the podcast, you can download the pod sheet, you can swipe and read the pod note, which is what you can see here. Or if you are in that position of where you are looking to leave, then as well as creating your career criteria, we really want you to leave well because in squiggly careers, you just keep connecting with people along the way. Really good Harvard Business Review po um, uh, article on that. And we've also done a squiggly careers podcast. It's episode number 50. So it's an earlier one for us, but it's all about how to leave well. So I hope that has been helpful for you. All the links to all of those resources will either be in our bio if you are watching this on Instagram or it's in the comments below if you're watching this on LinkedIn. If you'd like any other like short videos that can help you with the development, let us know. Uh, I'm really happy to create them for you.